What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Processed, and today we are going to look at what's happening around the NBA and other sports leagues because COVID-19 second wave seems to be hitting and putting other sports on pause, which is a little concerning, at least to me. We will get D-Ray's opinion in a second. And also, there was an article on CBS Sports, and it asked the five biggest questions heading into Orlando for the 76ers, so we will dive into that as well. But first, as always, we check in on the weekend. D-Ray, the weekend, how was it for you? Bro, I, I almost did absolutely nothing. Like, when I really think about it, I didn't do anything. I went to a party. There was less than 10 people there, I promise. Uh, just oh, yeah, because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm so concerned on how many people you're, you're with at this point. Guess what? It is what it is, man. I was about to say exactly. It's like, hey, it is what it is. But nah, I, I just chilled out, man. How about you? Uh, to, this weekend was actually a little crazy. Moving into the house in about mm -hmm. eight days or so. So going to get the mattress, going to get this, going to get that. Yeah, it's fist pumping until I check that damn bank account. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. All right. Slow down a little bit. I think we got enough. You know what I mean? But, Adulting. Yeah. Nah, yeah, All good, though. Congrats on that again, bro. Thank Congrats. You. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very I mean. much. So yeah, now the weekend's we're all packed with going to home home goods and all this and oh this this will look cute she says it's a fake plant for three bucks what do you mean look cute where's it going in the bathroom all right <laughs> this will look cute it's a fake plant in a, a little container hey, these man, damn succulents man chicks see if they see succulents their <laughs> eyes just light up <laughs> It's unbelievable. Compromise. Yeah. Compromise. It's like me seeing Ben Simmons dribble and splitting the double team. And yeah, oh, hitting threes. That's no, you can't compare hitting threes to the succulent. All right. If, <laughs> if they get that excited for the succulent, then we got a real problem here. All right. <laughs> Although they do, which is the crazy part. Let's talk about the league restarting up. Or maybe not. I just don't know at this point. Here's the thing you got baseball. And actually, the Philadelphia Phillies were the first team to kind of make some noise on Friday for testing positive with coronavirus. Yeah. And then the Blue Jays also had some people. Then the Tampa Bay Lightning had a few players test positive. Then actually, after reporting that nobody for two straight weeks in golf tested positive, there was one that actually did. So you're just starting to see there was, when you look at Clemson's football team, was it? Yes, there, yeah. We were talking 30, you know, I mean, a big time number. Mm -hmm. And Zeke Elliott, he was testing positive as well, along with some other teams around the league, the 49ers, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Look, all I know is you're starting to see a ton of people test positive in the sports world. And I'm not here to say, Look, the, the, the one argument when you say that is, who cares? It's just the flu. They're not going to die. We have enough information now to know that these people aren't going to die or whatever. That's not the point. The point is, if you have 30 players on a football team with coronavirus or five players in a clubhouse in the MLB with it, you can't just allow them to continue to go to the clubhouse every day because they're not going to die. Because what happens? They pass it to someone who passes it to someone who goes back to their family. And then the big snowball effect happens. So whether that person is going to pass away or not, that's not the conversation. Or if this is just the flu or not. The point is, you can't just have a ton of people leaving for two weeks, coming back for two weeks, leaving for two weeks, passing it to somebody else, and just acting as if it's not a thing when you're talking about pro sports. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, especially something as contact field as pro sports. Like you said, all right, it's 30 players. Yeah, the players, you know, might be fine, but the trainer has, you know, lives with their older, you know, mother or something like that, or older father, and, like, they get it. Like, that's the real problem in the snowball effect. It's those numbers start to climb and climb. We get close to everything shutting back down again. You know, everybody's on the edge of their seats, like sports is coming back. But, yeah, you're right, man. You're right. Like, it. it it almost seems inevitable that things are going to shut back down. Unfortunately, I don't see a scenario where maybe the NBA, you know, I mean, me and you spoke about this, obviously we're going to get into this in a minute with their, you know, bubble or whatever and contract trace and all that. But like for the rest, anybody who's out in the open, I don't see how things don't shut back down, but I also don't see how you get past this. And that's what I'm struggling with. I don't know about you, but it's at a point, bro. It's like, well, what the hell is the solution? You know what I mean? I don't know if we have one. I don't know if we actually have one. And that's the sad thing. That's what's scary about it. We don't see a timetable of this being fixed. And and another thing is, uh, hate to bring it up here, but I'm going to, when you have leadership that's happening right now in this country, yeah. it doesn't help. You know, it, yeah. just, it, ju it just doesn't help because you're getting so many mixed 
uh, feelings on what's going on. There's yeah. a rally over the weekend, no mass. People are filling up a stadium, but you can't go to a basketball game. And then, you know, it's 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 crazy. You're just getting a ton of mixed messages instead of being led. You know, I mean, you're yeah. supposed to have someone in office who will lead people and show them the right way. And, and this guy's a lunatic. So I, I hate to go same. down that road, but you're just getting awful of leadership really is what it comes yeah. down to when it comes to this you just don't know what's going on and he's not doing his job but i digress, no, 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 I digress. Good, <laughs> the one thing that concerns me a little bit too when you think about this is the bubble the bubble itself i think the idea of the bubble works here's where i have the the concern on if it is going to be executed properly you're going to need to have people who work at walt disney world be quarantined and bubbled as well they can't yeah. go to work every day and then, and then feed the people, work for the people, clean the sheets of the people and all that. Oh, and when wow. I say people, I'm speaking about the players. And then go home and then come back and then go home and come back and then go out to the bar that night and come back. You can't have that. So are people in Walt Disney World going to be quarantined for months and months and months as well? I mean, if they do, I assume their pay will go up. And some people, some people might not have a choice. If you have bills to pay and you haven't been working for how many months now, you might not have an alternative. You're, you might have to go, hey, I have to stay away from my family because i need to support them and and work here at walt disney world no it's definitely a trivial thing but i think it's necessary and i don't like nobody's talking about this you know new zealand has beat this thing right like new Dude, zealand as a country has... i bring i bring up the pre the lack of leadership by the president for a reason we are yeah. far behind we are extremely far behind compared to a lot yes. of countries out there yes 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 like it's just so it's possible it's possible. Like I said, New Zealand, they they reported a couple weeks ago, zero cases, X amount of time. They obviously have their travel ban on, so they figured it out. So in a way, that NBA bubble could very well work because if there's nobody in and nobody out and we don't have it, you know what I mean? Like that's kind of the idea of quarantine. It's just one big quarantine party. But I mean, me and you, let's be honest, me and you and a lot of the people out there are praying that that's the case because I, I don't want to see this thing go in reverse or the date get pushed back or them just not say we can't have sports because like I, bro I, i'm gonna just say it now i got a feeling if things fall back through again with this corona thing it's gonna be rough it's gonna get ugly we are gonna be looking at a lot people already frustrated it's hot it's the summer you see what's going on with everything else right now it is going to get rough so i am praying the sports come back, man. I'm with you. Out. I'm with you. I just, I think that you're going to see a pause on baseball. I think you're yeah. going to see a pause. I don't know. Maybe a possibly a pause on hockey. The only thing that gives me confidence is they are doing bubble cities. Baseball, they didn't plan on that. They planned on just playing in their home ballparks and things like yeah. that. So you, you have to travel up and down the East Coast. You're all around. I mean, I don't think that you can get it done that way. It seems as if the only way to really get it done in, in team sports is is to be able to, to do some sort of bubble city. Golf, you might be able to get by with golf. You might have a, a, a case here and there where it pops up. But for the most part, I think you can get away with golf because you kind of, you're on your own. You swing the sticks, you move on, you kind of play your own game. You don't have to worry about going into the clubhouse and being with 80 of your teammates, 90 of your teammates, 10 of your teammates, or whatever the case may be. You yeah. might be able to get away with golf. But when it comes to these team sports, the only way to possibly get it done is a bubble city and the the details and what is involved in the bubble city it's so ridiculous think about it something that doesn't normally go through somebody's head when you go to walt disney world is the size of the bed well guess what you're also not seven foot two they had to order all new beds they got to order all new this as i said they got to pay for these people to stay there and be quarantined i would assume so at this point so yeah. there's just so much involved in this hub city that you can't imagine this being a long-term thing for sports. I think you can get away with it for this back stretch if you're the NBA. But imagine, let's use the normal schedule, for example, October through June. If they have to do another season like this and it was October through June, I know that's going to not be the case because of the scenario now, but it, just imagine that long of time. There's no way that you can quarantine in a bubble city that long if this is what we're going to have to do down the road in a, in a normal season. No, it's not going to work. And it's not going to work because you need fans. At the end of the day, it's like, let's be honest, like sports are not going to. You said for this back stretch, yeah, it's going to work. But in the grand scheme of things, like if fans can't be there or fans have to travel there, no, it's it's 
that's why I said it's kind of like you're stuck in a bind because it's almost like, all right, this isn't going to figure itself out right now. We don't have a vaccine, but obviously like people are at a point where they're just like, it is what it is. But with these numbers rising, it's like, well, what does that ultimately mean? Does that mean we're just going to tough it out and thug it out and try to figure out, you know, I hate to say it, this the strongest survive type way, which I don't believe is the way to go about this at all, because we got medicines for how many other things are like you telling me they can't figure this one out, but it's just, I don't know, man. Like this is really, it feels like as the time goes on and on and on, this shit just becomes more and more trivial. It feels like it's getting so much more complicated than what it really was in the beginning. And it's just, I don't see how the world functions with this thing still being around until they find something that, you know, cause I could completely see the, the NBA getting through this season. And it's kind of like, if they get started, they'll probably finish. If they get started, they will finish. They're not going to let this just break down. But if they don't figure it out before the next season starts, like we could have a year without sports, which is scary as shit. Oh, it is scary. Yeah, no doubt. See, the problem is you said you don't really see this world functioning if this continues and you're not wrong. But the problem is we can't just shut down all these businesses and we got to find a way to reopen these businesses, but still not pass along the virus. And the three yeah. cities that sort of started opening up and the three states that started opening up, they're the ones now that are just getting pummeled with all of these coronavirus positive tests. You got Florida, which is the big concern for the NBA. But if you're in your own bubble, it shouldn't really relate to what's happening at Walt Disney World. But you have Florida, you got Texas, and you got Arizona. And these were states that open up early. So it's like almost inevitable that that's going to happen in all of these other spots that are now having outside dining and now having the beaches open. And, and California yeah. is another one that's just getting hit. So it's scary. I mean, I don't know where we go from here, but I don't feel good about it. The NBA is really the only one that's giving me a little bit of hope but you mentioned also if they start you don't see them just canceling it what if you start having 50 to 60 positive tests throughout the league is it possible at that point that they do shut down because they don't know how to get a grasp on things I mean I, I I'm with you you would think if they start they just say hey if you're rocking G leaguers at that point, so be it, but we're going to finish the season. I do understand that mindset, but at that point, what are you watching? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it's, it's, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. But like I said, I don't, I don't see them. If they really do this bubble thing through and through, like you said, people got to stay in there. Nobody's leaving. This is truly a bubble. Like we are truly quarantined for months on end. The only way you lose, only way you're leaving is you lose. Like if they deal with it like that, I don't see number one, how an outbreak happens. If an outbreak happens at that point, then it's just like, yo man, this thing might have us figured out. You know what I mean? Like coronavirus might just have us clocked. But if, a, if an outbreak doesn't start at that point, it's just like, all right, they, they're going to thug it out. They're going to figure out whatever they got to do. Because if you bring things back and then it goes away again, like I said, it, get, it gets ugly. Imagine if it gets so bad that they call the reserves. And me and you, we're in Orlando, baby. And we're on that court. You know what I mean? Now we're All talking. Defensive. Now, All defensive. Now we're talking. Imagine game seven, NBA finals. It's on ABC, 8, 30, 9 o'clock. And here comes the last fourth quarter, last couple minutes, and it's me versus you. I'm at the top of the key, and you're trying to defend me. I'll give you a little AI crossover. You fall back on your palms, and I pull up, and I just <laughs> clank. Ooh. Bomb. Damn. Damn. But guess what? I get my rebound, baby. Oh, my I insane. get my rebound because you don't box out. <laughs> the finals come down to Giannis and LeBron playing full court one on one. Like, could you? I just it's all these scenarios that I thought of that would just be like hilarious. Like it's four on four. Like it just turns into a three on three competition because everybody got sick. Like take back. Oh my god! You got to take it's, it back. Sure. Yeah. At that point, you're playing big three basketball. Pretty much. Pretty could you much. imagine one on one full court? Bro, that was a drill before. Like, Come it's on. like a drill to help. You. I'm dead ass. It's a drill to help you with, like, it's more for guards, but to help them, like, defend in full court uh, defense. It's not fun. No, that sounds horrendous. I'll be it's honest with fun. you. That sounds terrible. I, I might have mentioned this to you before, but, you know, because. I don't know. I'm just thinking basketball, like legit insane, you know, D1 Villanova or NBA basketball mm -hmm. practices. It's hard for me to to really, I don't know how to put this into words. Like if I told you to picture a hockey practice, NHL or college, 
Do you really know the flow of things? Like if I said, right now, how would you start? How would you warm up? What do you do after that? You'd probably not know where to begin, right? At all. At right, all. exactly. Like, not because the slightest fucking clue. Hockey has been in my blood forever. I can tell you what you do. This is what you do when you warm up, then you get the things yeah. going. For basketball, obviously, I understand drills that you would do. I understand drills. Yeah. But you tell me, like, the flow. Like, this is what you do first. This is what you do. Like, obvious stuff is what you do. It, basketball practices, I just go play pick up with the boys. You know what I mean? <laughs> they usually, I mean, it depends on who you play for. But it, I could imagine it's, it's the same. You you start with the, the easier fundamental things, the things you want to work on all the time. And then you get the plan. Is that, that's like the general outline? Like, do y'all, like compete in practice like is it just like just, yeah know, but it's funny out, See, you, right that's what you would think right like oh you just play hockey right because for for me it's like oh why would not you just play five on five the whole time but now nah, dude we'll we'll turn the we'll bring the nets to the corner and the net is facing the corner and then it's just two on two small battles or we'll just do three on two breakouts and then we'll, we'll four check one way we'll regroup the next and go back three on two the other way i gotta uh, to go be, to one of these yeah to be honest with you the five on five hey just go play hockey you don't really get that i gotta go to one of these i gotta see this I yeah i wish you could have saw me in my prime just blocking <laughs> shots and chipping the puck out doing the dirty work <laughs> That's not fun to watch at all, to be honest with you. Not even a little bit. Hunter Rodman. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't I like even say it. Brody on my last name. I, I forgot to tell you, in my studio, I have all my jerseys. It just says Rodman on the back. I wouldn't even quite. Like, if I saw it, like, you, like, turn the camera, I was just like. No. Yeah. Yeah, as if it's not even a big deal at all. Yeah. Nope. See, we went no last names in college. Sort of like mm -hmm. the Penn State look. Hate it. I hate it. I absolutely yeah. hate it. That shit, that's St. Joe's. Like, in what Punk world asses. are we not rocking the last name on the J? What are we, yeah. a high school team? Advisor, exactly, exactly. It's just, it's, it's, it's not okay. It's not okay. You need the, you need the, uh, the name on the back. And I, I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm starting to like, like the patches. Like, I really, like when the NBA started, like, allowing the patches. Because overseas does that. They always do, like, the sponsors and so stuff So you like don't that. mind the StubHub or the SeatGeek or like the, the Wish? I like that. You I like, like that? that. I like it. It's just, it, it give it a little, little something. Look, like I said, overseas kind of does it a bit more. They have like, you know, you look like a, a Dude, your nasty. team name is, is McDonald's. It's not, that's, that's what, what I'm saying. your team name is at that that's point. That's what I'm saying. Like you look like a damn, uh, like a NASCAR hood. Like that shit's not, I'm not a fan of that. But like, like the, ugh, I hate to give them a shout out anything. But the Knicks, you know what I mean? They got the Knicks and then it's like the Squarespace joint right there. It's just something, it's, it's the subtlety of it. It's like, all right. I'm, it just gives it that little badge. Now, you know what if what that I mean? was on a Villanova jersey? You think Jay Wright would have that? So we had we had we played at the the Pearl Harbor game one uh, one year. That, well, we got smacked against Oklahoma at the Pearl. We traveled halfway across the water to get our asses kicked at the uh, Pearl Harbor nice, game. Nice, nice. But we had the the Army patch. I meant the uh, like the Armed Service patch. Okay, and I was like that shit looks it's clean. It's clean. It's clean. If it's the right company, it's clean. But I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I don't know. I just. I think what it is now is you're almost accustomed to it. So yeah. you see it and you're used to it. And now you think, okay, you know, I, I like that little something on the other side. But yeah. if you said that maybe eight years ago, you'd probably be like, I don't want to see any advertisement on my jerseys. You just kind of get used to it. And now nah, you think that nah, there's nah. some swag to it. No, 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 no. I like it. I like it. I think the only thing I would want to see now in basketball is don't in hockey, y'all, don't y'all have like whoever is the captain has like a patch? Oh yeah, you rock like the C, baby. Band. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would no like arm, no that. armband. That's soccer. Whatever it is, it's something. It's something, yeah, you right? Get, you get the C on the on the on the top of the jersey. I would love to see that in basketball. Ooh. I would love to see a that. A C on the jersey? I would love to see that. I would love because it would always be the person you would like. I could imagine like maybe the captain for the Cavs was like, it wasn't LeBron, it was Colin Sexton. I, Oh, hell no. You what don't the, think so? I mean, no. Would it no, 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 not now. I'm saying when LeBron was there. Oh, whoa, whoa, like, whoa. Like if Kevin Love has like a C, like I just, I don't know. Like to me, I saw that in hockey. I asked him, I was like, what the hell is that C? They was like, that's the captain. I was like. It's normally the... one captain and then two A's for the alternate captain. So you got a couple A's and a C. I would like that. That's, yeah. that's I think that's the next step. Okay. Maybe we that's can do the... something. Maybe we can push it. <laughs> so then everyone's like, oh, there's a new, you know. Captaincy in the NBA. I was gonna say, just get thanks to processed, <laughs> hosted by Broads and D Ray. Yeah, oh, I mean, stop, stop. I'm blushing. <laughs> right. You want to get into some Sixers ball? Oh, 
<laughs> that sounded like you did it. Oh, oh no, do I have just, to do that? No, 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 man. It's just I, the ugh was like it hurts, man. It hurts. I do want to get to some Sixers ball, but I want to see. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I, you know me. I'm an optimist, man. But I, I'm, I'm scared for this shit. I gotta be honest with you. I'm scared for this. So that ugh was a. I really hope this works out because I need to see this team back on the floor. Okay, so you're Hell scared for COVID, not scared for the Sixers. Hell no, I ain't scared for the Sixers. Okay. Scared when they don't make none. No, 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 no. Okay. Ooh, okay. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's okay. Get it. My fault. All right. Well, b- before we dive into the five biggest questions heading into Orlando, and this is from MKB on CBS Sports, mm. there's a couple things to talk about when it comes to the Sixers. So, they could possibly I, I was looking at a, a totally different article. It had winners and losers of the uh the bubble, if you will. And the Sixers were in the losers bracket. And I was like, huh, now why is that? And they said based off of the OKC Thunders protected pick, it is possible that they lose out on a first round pick. So yeah, you know what? I think that is a possible loser, but let me explain. The Sixers have the OKC Thunders pick, but it's protected 1 through 20. So it has to fall 21 and out for them to get it. They are currently at number 22, which would give the Sixers the first round pick, which is huge. But there's eight games to go. So it's possible that if they don't land this OKC pick, it's a second rounder. And that's a big time difference. And think about it. That 20 range, if you get that 22, I mean, you're talking about maybe being able to find another Matisse Thybul type player or a Landry Shamit type player. I think that's a big, big, big thing to be able to receive is that OKC pick if it falls out of the top 20 because you found players in the recent past that can play in that range. Bro, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't think it matters. Wow, you don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. I think we are coming up on a day where like, so I I think of uh, Eric, Eric Pascal, you know, what he just did with the Warriors. And obviously it was a couple injuries, but you know, like even Steve Kerr said, he was a huge part of the reason why the year was what it was. And he was a second round pick. I want to say he was the 43rd. Uh, the kid from, uh, what's his name? Purdue, uh, Carson Edwards. Carson Edwards. Yes, I he, wanted him in that second round. <laughs> me and you both. Me and you both. I, I think he would have been a lot better in a Sixers uniform, but, like, that kid ain't no slouch. You know what I mean? A uh, Draymond Green. And I'm not saying that all these second round guys are just absolute winners, but I think the lines are getting blurred. I think we're at a point where the hype, because you, I ask you straight up, where is, do you know where Andrew Wiggins is right now? Andrew Wiggins just got traded from Minnesota to, man, the where Warriors. is he now? Oh, the, the Warriors. Warriors. Yeah, See what I'm saying? On the you Warriors had to think now. about it. You had to think about it. You think yeah, about but he's like, a bum. Exactly. <laughs> what? <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, I think we're in an era where, like, it's not as big as a deal to get a second-round guy. And quite frankly, because a lot of the older guys fall in the second round, I think the Sixers would benefit more from a guy who is a three- or four-year guy with this team is head. I don't think they need a guy who's like, they don't need a a guy who's the guy anymore. We got the guy. We have Joel Embiid and we have Ben Simmons. You know, we have all these people. We have Tobias Harris. I feel like they need a more mature player. And those guys, just because they don't pass the eye test or the age test, generally fall at towards the end of this first round or the uh, second. So no, I I'm with you. No, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm definitely with you. I, I understand your your philosophy there and your concept there. I just think, you know, with it, say they get a 22. If you are able to find, um, if this team had a Landry Shamit right now, I think, I mean, you got to find at that point, you need to find that player that has that one unique thing to their game that will help you. And at this point, realistically, it's shooting, right? I mean, you need to find a guy who can shoot the basketball, but if you get that, you getting that 22nd pick, let's just use that as an example, it gives you a better shot than, say, 40 or 35. And you, that's not saying you can't find those players later on, but, you know, if you can find that specialist that you need, you can get a better opportunity of landing it at that 22. It's not so much finding that insane player at 22, that Jimmy Butler that might fall to you, you know, because he was, I think he was the last pick in the draft, right? I mean, it's not about finding that specific player. He was, was he the last pick or was he the last pick in the first round, Jimmy Butler? I'm going to look it up. I'm pretty sure it was the last first round, I'm going to look it up. Okay, yeah, but regardless, it was, um, you know, it was later on, it wasn't high up. It's not so much about finding that player with this pick, but it's finding that specific player that will help fill your role. And with this team, 
it, it's shooting. So I, I do think it's important. You know, I, I do understand your philosophy of at that with where the Sixers are now and with their roster currently, how much room is there for a specific player, a first year player in the NBA? How much room is there for him? But if you do land a guy like a Landry Shaman or a Matisse Thibel, but a shooting version of him, well, then it, it, it can help big time. Oh, oh no, That's, that, that is the word of difference. It's just, it's still also that that kid's a rookie. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I right. just like right now you ask me if Furkan Korkmaz is in a big time moment, is he going to be able to deliver? Well, uh, probably I would yeah. say no more, more times than yes. And Matisse yeah. Dibel, for example, too, he, he's a young kid. I love his game. I love what he's able to bring to the table, but in a big moment in a playoff game, am I going to sit there and be like, as much as I love him and, and he had a great year, am I going to be able to rely on him to be able to do it for us this year? I, I, I don't know. We might need yeah. a couple more years. I we talk about Ben and Joel growing all the time. Well, even though Matisse isn't going to grow to be those type of players in his respected career and for what his role is he's going to have to grow as well but once again that doesn't mean I don't want any of these players because they need time to grow it's just with where the Sixers are now I understand your mindset of do they have that time to wait for a specific role player in the 20s to grow yeah but they do need it though I I mean I still think they they need that first round pick because look what we did at the trade deadline Mm mm-hmm you had to go out and get Glenn Robinson the third. You had to go out and get Alec Burks, right? I mean, it, what it would do to an extent is it would take stress off of that trade deadline where you got to fill three roles coming off the bench. It's more like, hey, we only need to go get that one guy because you might yeah. be able to, you know, squeeze a few minutes out of that rookie when when push comes to shove. Yeah, yeah. Oh, first off, Jimmy Butler was the first, first, uh, the last pick in the first round. Okay, but I, I completely agree with you, bro. I just. I don't know, man. It's weird with this Sixers team. Is I, I don't. I would like to think they could bring in a young guy and develop him. I can't think of too many players around the league that would fit that role exactly. Besides a JJ Reddit, you know what I mean. It'd be weird for his ass to come back. But it's just in the same breath that I want to say, all right, our shooter is all we need. I feel like it's it's not. I, I I stand by the the idea that we have a lot of what we need. It's just it has to be used better, and maybe that falls on Brett Brown. Lord knows I'm not part of the you know, you know, in Brett Brown uh, train. I'm not I'm not on that at all. Like I love him. Maybe that's on Brett Brown. Maybe that's on this team figuring it out. But I I think they have all the pieces. It's just obviously yeah, they got to get a draft pick. Period. But I don't think that whoever they bring in is gonna be a big time game changer. I think it's going to be, I honestly think like guys like Alec Burke and, and um, Glenn Robertson, the third were like, they were like fillers. You know what I mean? Like we have to do this. We have to have backup, but I think the Sixers kind of know, or shall I say Elton Brand kind of knows, listen, we got what we need. We got what we need. It's just, it has to be used better. That's All right. Well, if, if that is the case, if they have what they need, and it has to be utilized better, then yes, that absolutely falls on Brett Brown. And the players, too, they need to execute as well. But if no. that is the case, if they do have what they need, then I would say that it does fall on Brett Brown. But I, I think they have 90% of it. Mm-hmm. And then it comes down to, I, I do think they need more. They need they do need a little bit more shooting. And, and I did see this stat. I think this was on NBC Sports Philadelphia, one of their pieces. When it comes to um, two men, on the on the Sixers that play well together, it's actually Al Horford and Furkan Korkmaz. Al Horford and Korkmaz as a as a two man crew there, they actually have a pretty decent um, offensive number. So it, mm-hmm. I was almost I think that's why they wrote the pieces. If you wouldn't really expect this, right? What two players together kind of have a a nice little offensive game to them, and it so happened to be Al Horford and Furkan Korkmaz. So is that something that you'll see moving forward? I, I don't know. We will have what to What did they say it was? Like, what, were they, what were they saying it was on? Well, they just showed a bunch of clips and pieces of the ball movement and the swinging from a pick and pop, and then the ball moves over to Cork Moss in the corner and, and things like that, and just ball movement with those two guys. And um, just it, they just what it, it was breaking down analytics, and it, it gave how Ben, Joel, and – Al Horford together don't really work well, and Joel and Horford together without Ben has different numbers, and they said, surprisingly enough, Cork Moss and Al Horford together have some decent numbers, so it's just interesting. But keep in mind, when they say that as the two-man, 
Because they, they look at two players together in their specific numbers. Well, who else is on the floor? Because if Tobias is on the floor, Ben's on the floor. I mean, that matters in the conversation, right? So yeah. I, I do think it's a little skewed when you don't use who else is on the floor. Because, well, maybe they have good numbers. But does that always relate to just how those two are specifically playing? Or does it matter what else, whatever, what other players are doing on the floor as well? Yeah, I don't, that's an interesting stat. I would, I'm not gonna lie, as much shit as we give Court Mines, because Lord knows we give Court Mines shit, the world gives Court Mines shit. I would love to see him develop into like somebody that really makes it. Like, I'm not you saying you can argue he's that. at times he did this year, as much as I, I literally am known as the Furcon Court Mines hater. Like, that is <laughs> what I am known for. And, um, I mean, look, I, I tip my cap every time. Every time, this is the thing, though. Let me just, this, the thing. He has twelve bad games in a row. I don't. I don't hear a peep. Right. I don't. Yeah. I don't hear a damn peep. He yeah. has that thirty-six night game, and then here he goes. Here goes all those for bro. You're an idiot. What did I tell you? Yeah, you've been quiet for twelve games. All right, <laughs> you've been quiet for. And this guy, I, the one, like, there's a bunch of guys in my comment section. Do it. Your picture is Furcon Corkmas. Your YouTube name is Furcon Corkmas. Uh, hey. Who you uh, yeah, come, on. Yeah. Hey, come on. Something tells me you like this guy. Yeah. I don't know. Just a yeah. hunch. Just a feeling. And you've been quiet for a long time. But no, yeah. <laughs> in all seriousness, though, there were some games where you got to tip your cap. And when he has yeah. those games, look, I, I want the Sixers to succeed. I say this all the time. There are people out there who would rather be right and their team lose rather than be wrong and their team succeed. I'd rather be wrong a million yeah. times in a row. If it and, means they're winning. Yeah, of course. And then you have fun with it, right? So anyway, get back to your Furcon point. I just feel like he's, I don't know, bro. I don't know. It's like, like I said, I just, I look at this team and I, maybe it's because of all the changes over these past couple of years. Like obviously last year, everything with Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris. And, you know, you think about the changes before that. You think about how many, you know, you think about how big Markel supposed to be and then he wasn't, they trade him. It's like not saying that, you know, circumstances didn't change and they had to kind of adjust but something tells me that they know listen this isn't going to get much better this isn't going there isn't really anybody that you could bring in here that either wouldn't throw it off completely like there's nobody outside of a not even Jimmy Butler at this point because of what it is from the emotional standpoint that you could bring in here and it's like it's that aha piece. I truly think at this point with the Sixers, it is on the development of these young players because I can't think of anybody you could bring in and they wouldn't completely change the mold. Like I said it before, this has nothing to do with Villanova. I would love the, uh, the idea of a Kyle Lowry in a Sixers jersey. At the end of the day, he can knock down threes consistently. He can get Ben off the ball if you need a point guard out there when he's on the bench or if he needs to just play the four position. Like, he can do so many different things, and he has that wherewithal of the little things that it takes to win a championship. Taking charges, diving on loose balls, you know what I mean? The communications between guys. Bitching to the refs. Exactly, bitching at the refs because LeBron does that as well. But he, like he has, he has, no, no, no. But he has like to me like those like him and Eric Bledsoe are really like well Eric Bledsoe number one. But those are the guys that I'm like all right. When I look at those guys, those are the only pieces I can imagine that you could bring them in and it wouldn't throw everything off. The issue is it ain't can happen. It you know what I mean. So I feel like with the Sixers at this point, it's like listen, I've got everything y'all gonna get. Figure it out. You know what I mean? I'd like even the coaching change. It's like you bring in a coach. What coach is going to come in and, and talk to these guys in a way? Apparently, I just, I, apparently any other coach but Brett Brown is yeah, your ass. That shit kills me. That shit kills me. It's like it's just you You do all these changes. You make all these adjustments. And let's be honest. Joel and B got drafted, what, 2015? Was it 2015? Nah, or 2014? It's 14. Man, it was time 14. flies. Uh, time exactly. flies. When you so said it, that, I almost thought it was in the other direction. I mean, that's yeah, how much, yeah. I'm buying a house. What the yeah, hell? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, like, so, so, like, to call it what it is, like, we talk about development. We talk about them taking time. But let's be honest. The process got drafted six years ago. It's 2020. At some point, it's like, listen, either they're going to blow this shit back up and start new, or it's like, y'all just have to figure it out. And I'm really, I'm on the side of figure it the fuck out. Cork Mize, figure out, deep, dig deep in you, whatever you got to get to start shooting better and having more of those. He shoots well, but he's 40-something percent. It's, yeah. well, on the road, it was bad. At home, it was phenomenal. On That's the road, it was terrible. That's what I'm saying, on the yeah. road. 
on the road. Like y'all figure out what y'all got to do to get yourselves together. They obviously have it. Look at what they do at home. It's like y'all have it. It's just y'all have to figure out how to channel that other times. Y'all have to figure out how to get over that hump because I just I don't think there's another piece. I don't think there's something that has to be brought in. I don't think there's a rookie that's going to come in and make a big difference. I just don't see it. I feel like at this point, that shit is on this team. No, I'm with you. I'm going to write a little quick note here for once we get to this, then I'm going to come back and come around. So we'll do, uh, we'll we'll get into this little article real quick because there's five questions heading into Mm -hmm. Orlando and um, we'll kind of just, shoot around these questions and and discuss them a little bit. And we'll start with the first one, which is how will the Sixers fare at a neutral location without fans? And once again, this article is from MKB at CBSSports.com, and he covers the Sixers. So actually, he also Mm -hmm. used to work for 97.3 ESPN. Small world, how that all works. But um, yeah, so how will they play without fans in this arena? If they even play at this point, that's the concerning thing. We just don't know. But, you know, do you think that it will hurt them because there's no fans and they're used to the reaction of the Wells Fargo Center? Or because of how bad they are on the road, do you think that because it's less crazy and it's less all, you know, stressful about being on the road, do you think that might actually benefit them? No, I got to be honest with you, brother. We had talked about this before, and the more I think about it, I feel like this is going to expedite a lot of growth with the Sixers. I think removing both factors of y'all don't feed off that energy that y'all have at home, but you also don't feed off of the negativity that you have on the road. I think it's going to make them realize how much it is them and them. You talk about a lot of great players. LeBron, to me, is probably the best example of someone who just locks in and focuses when it comes to all right, kill all the outside distractions. Jordan was great at it. Kobe was great at it. You talk about the man in the arena. That's why he writes that on his shoes, the man in the arena. I think this is going to show them that it doesn't matter what the crowd is saying or what the crowd isn't saying because it ain't no fucking crowd. It's y'all. It's 94 by 50 feet. It's two baskets. It's one ball. They got five guys. Y'all got five. And I really think it's going to get them out of whatever they were in to make them play so good at home and play so damn terribly on the road. No, I'm I with you. No, I'm, I'm with you. The, in the beginning, it's, oh, how are they going to be able to do it? How are they going to be able to execute? How, how are the fans not going to be there? What is it going to be like? But Figure it out. Yeah, the more and more I think about it, it might actually help them as if, damn, we got to do this. We, we got to come together and do this. It's almost as if they have no other options. Make exactly. sure you figure it the hell out. And I, look, I, I've been around playing hockey forever. And when I get on that ice, it doesn't really matter how many people are there it could be a rink where there's 50 people there it could be a rink you know it's it's weird where I played in our division there were teams that barely got any fans and then there were mm-hmm. there we played Utica who sold out 5,000 so some nights you could go from one team in your division that gets like for example when we, when we would play Newman Newman yeah. had if you're lucky, 100 fans on the, on the one bleacher side. And then mm-hmm. the next night, you'd go to Utica, and there'd be 5,000 people. But once you step on that ice, it's almost as if it doesn't even matter. It doesn't you just matter. play. So I wonder if you go out there, and it just doesn't matter. But I will say, one, that's easier said than done, right? I mean, it could actually matter. And two, it's just so weird and such a unique environment that – it's kind of naive to think nothing would feel different, right? I mean, it is a little different to think that nothing will be changed because you're on the floor. No, no, no. I'm not saying that it's not going to affect them. I'm saying I think it's going to show them how much it doesn't matter. Like, I don't – what I saw this year was a team that, like I said, they fed off of that that home energy. Jerome B feeds off of throwing his hands over his ear. You, you, know, did, you didn't Simmons like that? Up. It's not that I didn't like it. It's just – if you have that, be that same villain. Take that and then use that to be the villain on the road. Be the one on the road that you're throwing your hand up, but not because they're um, you know, they're saying, yeah, Joel, Joel, not because they're cheering you on, but because they're booing, because you're just blowing their home team out. But like I said, at the end of the day, a team that wins wins it all to me as a team that's not phased by either one. They almost don't let it up them when you hear Kobe Bryant Michael Jordan LeBron talk about their mentality it's like that doesn't affect them yeah will they feed it's like extra credit will I feed off of it cool but I'm not gonna let this shit hurt me and we showed this like they showed it this year it hurt them if they didn't have it that is a huge issue because the team that has that issue they can't win shit like you can't win. think about that 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 uh that Warriors and uh Cleveland Cavaliers series a couple years back 
The Cavs had to go and get that. You know what I mean? They had to go and get that over there. Like, so you telling me a team that can't travel to Charlotte and win, you know, is going to go take that from them. Like you have to be able to have that in spades before you're really going to make some real noise, especially in the playoffs. No, so absolutely, I, I think absolutely. it's going to expedite it. No, I'm with you. I, I think that's a great mindset to have. Uh, I hope that is the way it goes down, though, because there is an alternative. But the way you laid it out, yeah, let's hope they do that because that would be beautiful. And that's what we're hoping for. It's not out of the question. I think it's possible. I think it's very reasonable. But there is an alternative side as well, which is not as pretty as what you just laid out. But let's see. Let's see how much they have. Let's see them dig deep. And, and from there, we'll kind of see where the squad goes. So question yeah. two is how healthy – is Ben Simmons. Question number two, heading into Orlando, how healthy is Ben Simmons? And now you're seeing pictures of LeBron and him working out. Dude, first thing I noticed, it kills me that my goat has uh, gray, gray beard hair. Are you serious? Let me look to my right. I see my man ooh, in a Cleveland Cavs jersey looking beautiful all framed up. <laughs> looking good. Back in his prime prime. I think this she was maybe 30 years old with that jumper that's good now i'm seeing gray beard hair and then i think there was a video going around online of, uh, he was playing with his kids and brushing the hair back and we knew it was a bad hairline but oh not my oh. goat come on not to my it's, goat it's over man goats no, get old stop. goats get old ain't nothing wrong with that i know but it's ain't nothing wrong with that dude by the way though his swag i mean him and just seeing pictures of him and ben that that swag together <laughs> looks good no 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 it looks great it looks great. I, I i loved it I, i'm not gonna lie but i was impressed by this you see the video i'm dunking a yes, and this it yeah. just relates to what the hell is going on with the messaging. And to me, at this point, nothing's wrong, right? I mean, yeah. can, we, can we agree that nothing is wrong at all? Yeah, yeah. I, I really like I told you, but I really feel like it's just a precaution there. because let's say something does go wrong, or let's say something you know, he does tweak something a little bit, then it's like, listen, we straight up said we couldn't guarantee everything. I don't, but after watching those videos, I was like, this month. Well, th what he's doesn't fine. make sense is it's it's okay to say. Ben Simmons is not 100%. That's fine. He had a back problem that forced him to throw up. I get it. He'll never yeah. be 100%. Don't go with the, we'll ease him into it. We're, we're just going to inch him back. We don't really know what we got. Well, what do you mean? The dude is like Tomahawk Duncan in all these <laughs> videos. I mean, something's not adding up here. So you can say he's not 100%, but don't give me, we don't know what's going to happen. We're inching him back and this and that. Stop. We're going to play yeah. Ben Simmons. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna play Ben Simmons, and we'll see. We're gonna play yeah. Ben Simmons. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be fine. <laughs> they gonna play him for sure, but I, I, I don't know. I don't like. I said I think it's just precautionary, but at the same time, I think with him too, it's like, bro, the pressure's on. You know what I mean? His attitude is, I gotta get out there and perform because I can't look like a fraud. You know, you only got so many chances with Philly fans until it's like, man, this guy, get the hell dude, out, dude. You here. kidding me? That's ha that happened since day one. Yeah, it, it day one he was drafted, and that that thought was already going through people's heads. Yeah, man. Yeah, so it's it's, it's put up and shut up for all of them. Like for all, like for for Elton Brand, for Brett Brown, for John B, for Ben Simmons. It is. I feel like it is a slew of just put for the Sixers organization as a whole. It's put up and shut up. Is this shit real? Is this trust the process shit real, or was it just a ploy to kind of get some more fans in the stands? And I, I love that they have to go down there and figure it out. You know what I mean? In a, in a neutral site for them. I love that they're in, like, their back is against the wall. But I got a feeling this group with their back against the wall is when they're going to do their best work. Absolutely. I love the fact that they're going to be battle-tested in here. It's just uh, some people, some fans, they don't look at it that way, you know? And and I mm -hmm. like the fact that you're kind of seeing what you got. You're, you're getting tested. But it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work out either, you know? I, I think that, that, to me, and, and I've been saying this for a while, what's that face? Are you disagreeing with me or are you, you agreeing? I think so. Well, no, because I know, and this is, I mean, it's just basic, and I'm using history. I understand that when people dominate the league and win you championships, they are 27 to 33 years old. Yes. To me, I like Joel Embiid. I love Joel Embiid, let's say. This team isn't winning until it's Ben Simmons' time. He's not that age yet. He's got years to go. When when Ben Simmons is 26, 27, 28, 29, I think that's when the Sixers are going to win championships. So mm -hmm. I'm more patient than the rest because people demand it now, demand it now. And that's not to say I don't think that they have enough talent to make some runs and get to the Eastern Conference Finals and, and play good ball. But 
I don't think this team wins until it's time for Ben Simmons to really take over. And I don't see that happening for a couple years. So I think I'm just more patient than the rest because it's Ben Simmons for me. It's Ben Simmons. He will be the one that will be the shadow of LeBron's playing style with that type of mentality until Ben gets to that version. And I'm not saying he's going to be LeBron because that's obnoxious, but with, with his style of LeBron's play, until he gets to the best that he can be with it, I don't think the team wins it. So it's on Ben for me. It's on Ben. So um, we have a couple more questions, but here's the thing. I'll let you decide. Do you want to continue to fire these off right now, or do we have a little tease and wait for Thursday to drop the rest of the questions and continue the conversation? I think Thursday should be an overall tease uh, episode because, to be honest, we still have not followed through on our Josh well, Richardson. Well, well that's, <laughs> I knew that was going to come. The thing is, though, that will come up in one of these questions. So I think yeah. that it's perfect. We have three questions left. We will have plenty more to talk about on the next episode, along with some NBA news that will obviously be in play from now until Thursday. So Hopefully it's good. Okay, so you're going to you're gonna lean with the tease then. Hoping this, I'm hoping this news we get is good. But uh, yeah, go on okay. with the tease. We'll go with the go tease. With the tease. All right. No, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. You got to you gotta have the people waiting. Exactly. I want people banging on the table. Thursday morning with their coffee, refreshing to see when this damn thing re you know what I mean, uploads. I think it's gonna Let's happen. Do it. Yeah, it's Let's like my do mom. It. Like, come on, Hunter. <laughs> and We're we still slacking. got our if it doesn't work, we still got our one topic that we never we never nah, use. No one knows just, about that but us. It's just like a draw for Uno, like yeah. Not yeah. now. Not now. <laughs> Only us know about that. Exactly. Our, our side combo that we have buried away since episode one. Where exactly. if there's nothing to talk about. We will talk about it. But here's the thing. It's a pretty damn good thing that we haven't used it yet. It just shows you uh, how much we don't really even need it. I bet you yeah. will be 300 episodes in going, hey, you know, if we need it. We got to do it. If we need it. No, <laughs> now we got to do it. I want to see how long we go without using it. But by the way, this is episode 20. 20 episodes in, not one damn basketball game. How about it? I'll tell you what. Making it happen, bro. Making it happen. All right. Thank you guys so much. For listening to this episode of Processed, and we will see you next time.